Okay, welcome back. Uh, bought a new item for the uh, BMW S1000 XR, which is the connected ride cradle, which was released just before Christmas. For whatever reason, I ordered it back then, and it's taken until now, middle of February, for it to arrive. I was told an initial date of around March time, um, and I know that they have really limited uh, numbers coming in. Uh, so hopefully uh, this little video will be able to say whether it's worth it or not. Uh, retails for about 180 something, 184, 185 pound and with 10% discount paid 169 for it. Uh, so I'm not sponsored by BMW, although I wish. Uh, but hopefully you should be able to see what it's like. This is supposed to replace the Nav 6 and use a connected app. Um, via your phone to give navigation and other function functionalities and I think it's the way BMW are going I can't see or find any information on a potential Nav 7 or anything coming in the near future uh, so without further ado just a quick simple unboxing hopefully it'll be worth the money so a little card giving instructions of how to fit simple enough the actual device quite sturdy looks tough plastic uh, very similar to the on the rear to the nav 6 uh, USB-C point with a waterproof cover there alright oh, okay obviously how you fit the phone so you have a button to press here and a simple ratchet hopefully it lasts quite long and then the pack part for the wireless charging little wireless charging indicator there um, so yeah not bad still can't see why it's 180 pounds worth of plastic is that a sticker? Does that come off? Yep. Okay, cool. That can go uh, on here. Like it. Okay. Uh, so I'll take it over to the bike and see how... Uh... So currently see that I have the Nav6 fitted to my bike. This is the obviously the S1000 XR. So I'll remove the Nav6. So just before I do, just go over the aesthetics of the Nav6. You know, it's, it sits quite centrally. Um, and I don't think it's that obtrusive. I mean, it looks quite good. So to remove the Nav6, uh, it's a simple case of unlocking it. Um, pulling the locking bit out of it and there's a tab on this side press in pops off and then the nav 6 compared to the the cradle so very much similar and again fit the cradle hook at the bottom fits on the hook pops in Push in the locking pin and then lock for security. What does it look like? Well, it's not too bad. Um, in order to fit my phone, my iPhone size comparison is the iPhone 12. So just to give you some comparison, uh, Pro Max. So pull the tab out, slide the phone in, pull the bottom out, to pull the bottom down. Phone fits in nice and snug. And that's held in place. Okay, so power the bike on, single press of the 
the ignition switch with the key in the pocket little green light pops up shows you that it's working and wireless charger comes on so just going to put my code in go to the connected app do you know what I really need to set the portrait don't I Will it actually? No? Okay. So connect new device. Searching device. The device that I've been displayed here. Cradle, click on cradle. Pair. And it automatically I'll do that locking pin up on the right. Oh, and it goes through an instruction of how to fit the, the device. Okay, insert the smartphone. And I'll slide the smartphone in. And do the screw up. Check smartphone cell securely. You can now remove your smartphone from the case easy anytime by pulling the lower support arm down. Okay, so just, yeah. Just pull it down, take it in and out, except press and hold the rocker switch for two seconds in the pure ride screen of your TFD display and this will transfer to the cradle. So what they're saying there is like the nav, you've got the TFT on the top left and just grayed out is the nav. So obviously the control wheel and button menu button will control the TFT in order for it to control the nav hold it up the menu for two seconds now we have controllability of the um, the phone so it just goes through some instructions obviously get used to it left right scroll up so we have map bike info connectivity hub and that's about it at the moment so a map it's nice and clear nice nice display um, and we can zoom in and zoom out I don't know whether it gives any any details of what's on the road at the moment like Google Maps Should have turned my notifications off. Yeah, I can see some red and amber bits on the map. Okay. So navigation, click right. You can enter address. So enter address you can be with fingers. Or you can tap Cardiff City Centre. Cardiff City Centre. Cardiff City Centre. Okay. Cardiff. Oh. All right. So voice doesn't work that well. I'll have to see whether it, you can do it by a, a center system. So obviously, I'll type in Cardiff. In Cardiff. I don't know, anywhere in Cardiff, calculating route. Uh, really surprised, it's a really clear display. And obviously then, we'll give you, touch screen doesn't work. Ah yeah, if you're inactive for a while, then It will revert back to TFT. So just keep an eye on that. Yeah, so really clear display. It allows me to zoom out loads actually. Oh, it's a world. It's 
So how do I then cancel the route? Active route guidance, destination information, add a new waypoint, end navigation. Okay. Recent destinations. Yeah, that's what I just put in. Points of interest. So charging stations, fill in stations, eat and drink, park and rest, lodging, health, other. So if I go to fill in station, see how accurate it is. So fill in station, Tesco's, where do I normally go? Sainsbury's Bridge End, calculating route. It's coming up on the TFT as well. Okay. Well, that's quite clever. So it does come up on the TFT as well. So I can enable audio. And cancel it via the TFT. Okay. So go back to nav, zoom out. Yeah, it's pretty much the way I'd go to Sainsbury's from here. So that's not too bad. Let's uh, cancel the active route guidance and nav. Favorites, no favorite locations yet. Settings. So let's go to favorites, see how easy it is to fit a Okay, I'll have to have a look at that, how, how we had a favourite. No locations available. Settings, spoken instructions, consider traffic, yeah, display navigation information on TFT. So the TFT pop-up takes operating control away from the cradle. Okay, route options, route type, fast, short, efficient, winding. Well, it's always gonna be winding, isn't it? Avoid, avoid highways, avoid tolls. Yeah, avoid dirt roads, yeah, avoid ferries, avoid tunnels. It's very responsive with the touch wheel very responsive or oh, map settings map orientation perspective view orientating direction of travel oh, I'm old school orientate northwards map style day night automatic yep auto zoom dynamically adjust the map display for the next maneuver deactivating enables user to zoom out in aerial view traffic information Navigation overlay, overlay visibility, always display. Yeah, okay. Arrival time at destination. Yeah, cool. Speed limit information, always display. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Do not display if TFT motorcycle is connected yet. Yeah. So what that I think that does is a TFT displays the speed anyway. So what's the point in doing it on the nav? Uh, okay, that's the settings. Oh, go back. Settings. Root options. Map settings. Yeah. Okay. So come out of that. Let's go back. So nav bike info so again exactly like the nav 6 i had um all the information like tire pressures fuel tank range okay uh speedometer or lean angle like the sports side of things and th those are the two Uh, settings that you get um, connectivity hub connectivity cradle map 
So yeah, so just basic, basic map details. Okay, so at the moment there is only three sort of like menus that come with the cradle. Maps, bike, and about the hub itself. So if I go back to the nav, so back to the TFT, sorry. So if I go back to the TFT, the settings, does anything pop up in settings, connections? No. Display, information, reset all, system settings, vehicle settings, anything? Nope. System settings, anything? Nope. Telephone, media, navigation, sport, my vehicle. No. Okay, added to favourites. So there's a little star in the top right that you can add an address to favourites. So if I go back into favourites now, favourites, he's up there with my address. Awesome. Okay, so that is basically it. Cradle mount fitted. Phone fits easily into the device with my case on. Power it up, should automatically connect. Yep. In order to control the cradle, you have to hold up on the menu button for two seconds. Indicates nav on the TFT. I can then control the cradle, or the phone in the cradle. Zoom out, if I go to favorites, I should see my address on there now. Uh, it's a really clear display, which is the iPhone, nothing to do with the um, cradle. But uh, the actual matte background is really, really clear. I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but you know, I can pretty much have no issues seeing all of that while riding. So hopefully, um, I'll take the bike out for a spin um, to show you how good or how poor the cradle is. The uh, thing that's freaking me out a little bit is how off center it is because the phone isn't in the middle of the display. So if I were to sit on the bike, so you could see what it looks like while sitting. Oh. It's not too bad, but yeah, I notice compared to the nav, it's, it's at, sort of like at an angle. So I'll put the nav in. Just for comparison. Don't fall. And there's a difference. So the nav does sit pretty much dead center of the display or the TFT. 
So something you get used to. Ooh. Does it affect the screen? So nav in there. Put this back in. Slide into the bottom, connecting to the top. Right, so I can't see how to adjust the screen. I can't see the handle. I have to put my hand underneath it. So yeah, so I can pretty much still reach it. Uh, I can look around to see it. But it doesn't affect it that much, to be honest. Obviously, smaller phone, iPhone 12 normal size or iPhone 13 would fit in there probably a lot more symmetrically. But yeah, I'll take it out and give it a real world test.